Carl Gustav Jung's influence on Frank Herbert is apparent from the beginnings of his career as a writer, and his interests in psychology and psychoanalysis dominate the themes of his first novel, The Dragon in the Sea. This interest in these subjects, as mentioned earlier, was greatly influenced by Frank's relationship with the Slattery family, and in Brian Herbert's biography of his father Dreamer of Dune, he discusses the importance of this to Frank. In particular, it helped Frank to understand how important it was to his writings to develop a realistic understanding of human motivation, which would then provide him with the essential component of characterization. In fact, the dominant themes of psychology entwined with ecology are in many ways taken from the dragon in the sea and expanded upon greatly in Dune. The influence of Jung was so great on Herbert, it also featured heavily in most of his story's themes and in his characterization. In Dune, it forms a fundamental element of his study of dangerous superheroes. In initially constructing the language and style of Dune, he often used the motifs of the Jungian mandala in developing his writing. Much of the prose in Dune started out as haiku and then was given minimal additional word padding to make it conform to normal English structure. I often use a Jungian mandala in squaring off characters of a yarn against each other, assigning a dominant psychological role to each. The implications of colour, position, word root and prosodic suggestion are all taken into account when a scene has to have maximum impact, and what scene doesn't if a book is tightly written? In addition to predominantly influencing not only his writing style, the study of Jung's ideas of the archetypes and the collective unconscious also featured heavily in Herbert's understanding of the hero and myth. According to Jung, the unconscious is a gathering place of forgotten and repressed contents but differentiates between an individual or personal unconscious and what he calls a collective unconscious. The experiences acquired within the personal unconscious are unique and specific to any given individual, generally seen as complexes, and Jung sees the personal unconscious as a superficial layer which rests upon a deeper layer, called the collective unconscious. Jung used this term as he saw the collective unconscious as a shared set of ubiquitous psychic content. These collective contents that share a commonality of form and idea are what Jung described as the archetypes of the collective unconscious. The heroic ideal then is an archetype to all cultures as for example are the archetypal figures of the father and mother figures, the child, the core, the trickster and the syzygy along with numerous others. Jung discusses in some detail the psychological aspects of the core in relation to the archetype. In its mythological context, the core is a representation of the Greek Chthonic deity Persephone as the maiden in relationship to her mother, the Olympian goddess Demeter, and the Chthonic deity Hecate, who is the crone. Collectively they represent a triple goddess which is predominant in many early religions and mythologies. This is common to the representation of these goddesses as deities of the earth, in particular of grain and harvest. Persephone as the youngest form of the triple goddess would represent the young corn, and hence her association for a part of the year with the underworld. Demeter as the mother represents the ripening corn, and Hecate as the old mother or crone, would represent the harvested crop and therefore death and renewal. In this sense the archetype of the Kore and the triple goddess can be seen as representations of farming and harvest, and hence the rituals that develop around these seasonal activities for human beings in early primitive cultures. Such early mythological patterns represent how these cultures develop an understanding of the natural world and its cycles and patterns. Within Dune we can see representations of the triple goddess in more ways than one. As is revealed in the Dune prequels, the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohiam is Jessica's mother and hence Paul's grandmother. Mohiam represents the crone of this archetype, whereas Jessica appears as the mother. It is with Alia, her preborn daughter, that we have another representation of an archetype within an archetype, echoing always the spiral or chaotic nature 
of that which is hidden within pre-existing forms, such as the Machiavellian plans within plans within plans, and the eyes of those addicted to the spice melange, which are blue within blue within blue. Alia is at once the youth, the daughter, and innocent virgin. In the case of the triple goddess, she represents the Kore, but as she is described in Dune Messiah, she is also individually the virgin and harlot, yet another archetype. Herbert, who obviously ascribes these archetypes to Alia, describes her as follows in one of the novel's historical passages which begin each chapter. The Fremen see her as the earth figure, a demigoddess whose special charge is to protect the tribes through her powers of violence. She is reverend mother to the reverend mothers, to pilgrims who seek her out with demands that she restore virility or make the barren fruitful, she is a form of anti-mentat. She feeds on that proof that the analytic has limits. She represents ultimate tension. She is the virgin harlot, witty, vulgar, cruel, as destructive in her whims as a Coriolis storm. St Alia of the Knife, as taken from the Irulan report. Alia in addition to this represents one half of the syzygy with Paul, together being two parts of the male-female counterpart Janus deity. While both have other memory, Paul the male and female line, and Alia the female Bene Gesserit line, Paul is able to look forward to the possible futures with his prescient sight, while Alia is severely limited in this ability. Leto II and Ganema also represent another form of the Syzygy archetype, the two preborn Atreides twins, sharing much in common with their father Paul and their aunt Alia. Within these Jungian archetypes, both Leto I and Liet kinds function as the father, both actual and adoptive, while Jessica functions as the mother archetype, partly transitioning through the different stages of the triple goddess form. Numerous characters also function within the hero archetype, both male and female, over the course of the Dune series, notable that Paul Atreides is a superhero amongst many heroes. The Baron Vladimir Harkonnen is an archetypal villain and trickster at the same time, and also forms part of a syzygy with Alia through her uncontrolled use of other memory, which ultimately leads to her becoming an abomination. Brian Herbert also discusses his father's interest in Jungian archetypes in the first Dune novel. Other mythological archetypes were found in Dune as well, including a fool, Raban, a witch mother, the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohim, a virgin witch, Alia, and the wise old man of Dune mythology, Pardot Kynes. Jungian archetypes perpetuate throughout the Dune series, and whether they possess any validity in the study of mythology, as mythemes perhaps, again what is important to note here is Herbert's deliberate use of them. Jungian archetypes are prevalent in the Dune series used by Herbert both in developing his characters and creating and fleshing out his concept of the dangerous superhero.